Okay. So hopefully that's running. It looked like it had a little bit of a minor hiccup. And so we'll get on with it. So hello and welcome. Throughout this video, may you be inspired, learn something new, or simply relax while you're watching. And so what we're going to do is just take this pour. It's an old acrylic pour that I have. It's on an 8 by 10 inch canvas. And, <clears throat> excuse me, we are going to paint on it using the Atelier A2 Ivory Black. I like to use this for focus, maybe. For um, when I'm painting over things, because it's it's a really highly pigmented paint. I've got some brushes out, so I've um, they're not fancy. I don't know specific names for paint brushes. So we have a flat one and then we have a pointy one, I guess. And then I've got some gloves because I really don't want to touch that too much um, and put the oils from my hands onto the canvas. So, set you all up there. All right, let's get started. So what I thought I'd like, like to do for this one is definitely got you down for a different angle. So, hey, baby cakes. Hello, hello. I hope you slept well. All right, gloves on, just to avoid that transference of oils. And I'll just grab, see this is, mm, dirty. I'll just grab a bottom of a cup. See, I have this one, which is um, way too dirty for what I need as well. So, let's just use some photo paper off to the side. And then that's what I'll use as my palette. So, I haven't gone to sleep yet. Oh. <laughs> Now I'm the one getting confused. <laughs> oh dear. All right. So we we'll just pop some of this down onto the photo paper. And <clears throat> what I was thinking for this one were the balancing rocks. Um, I thought that would be pretty cool. So, and I'll just get a little container and use that for the water. And in there, and voila. All right. So using the smaller brush, I thought I'll just... I'm not going to use a stencil or anything. I'm going to completely wing it. Because, <laughs> you know, why not <clears throat> take a chance? So just getting the paint into the brush, into the bristles. Adding a dash of water to it just to make it a little bit more fluid. So just for this first part because I want to be able to flow around 
the shape of a rock. Jean, welcome. Please let me know if I said that correctly. Um, thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, just go for it, right? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start not quite on the bottom, but near the bottom. And trace out a rock shape. So generally they start bigger at the bottom because I'm just rolling with it. It's going to create, ready? That is an awesome brush. <laughs> just popped off. I could feel it loosen as I was going around. So let's see how it goes. All right. Um, yeah, it's going to give a natural shape as the bristles drag around. Um, I'm good. Awesome. All right. I know. Crazy, right? Oh, dear. I have to get some pliers and crimp it in a little tighter, I think. So we have the first shape done. It doesn't even matter that it's not a complete solid line. So now we just go with the second shape. So deciding on what that's going to be, I might go back this way this time. Right. So again, random for what that's going to be. Hanging over to the right side a little bit more. And then have another one. So we're definitely rock heavy to this side, but this last one is going to balance almost in the center in this area. Also, while I'm going around the rocks, just trying to make sure that my brush isn't going to fall apart. So, I'll put it around here, maybe. Which also may give a little bit of room. for a smaller one just resting on the top. There we go. There's our rocks. Beautifully misshapen and balanced. So, all right, from here, I'll actually stop using that brush um, just because we'll just set that aside and grab this bigger one because now it's time to fill in the entire background. All right, so this is somewhat a little bit of time consuming so if you've got any questions please hit them hit me with them now <laughs> as we go through and fill in that background 
So just coming up to the line and dragging it out. I'm not going to stress too much about the sides. I just want to get use have this paint just go over that rolled edge of the stretcher bar underneath and then I can black out the sides at a later point so but if I can just get this paint to roll over that will be awesome All right. So for those of you who haven't heard yet, I have just started a Facebook group. Um, I know that Facebook groups for acrylic pouring and all resin art and all that are highly, highly saturated. But as I keep being asked um, how photos of pieces of art can be shared with me I thought now is the time to start the group and have that be an easier possibility way of sharing between us so for those of you that have Facebook if you type in the search bar creating and sharing with Tracy EY Tracy with an E uh yeah you should be able to find the group and if you just request to join i've only just started it so there's only a few of us in there but i would like it to be a a place of sharing and inspiring and encouraging others so because I'd love to see, I'd love to know what I may have inspired the most in you or what you've created that you just would really love to share with me. So that would be amazing. I'll also be able to post some events in there for specific um special live videos or something that are coming up and keep you updated with what's happening so something to consider for you guys is it tuesday the 26th at 9 45 p.m for you right now uh eight 45 p.m. well six now yes so it is Tuesday it is the 26th but it is 8 45 where I am right now all right so Jean did you have silicon in the original pot? I did. Um, <clears throat> I have used silicon from a spray can. I did clean it over, clean over it ages ago because um, <clears throat> this is an old pour. Sorry for that. And so... But it does, I did use silicon for sure. And I know that this darker blue in here and potentially this yellow, uh, they were house paints. Actually, now that I look at it, I think they were all house paints. So this might have been a Bunnings mist tint house paints kind of pour.
Okay, you're finally figuring it out. Yeah, it is a little bit, takes a little bit of time to adjust to the different time zones. So, but we get there. So the only thing that I guess, this is the first time I've done this as well. So I think I forgot to mention that. So I am making suggestions of what to do next and what I'm doing, but it really is still a trial. <laughs> Um, and something I have learned already because from when you try things out um, it's most definitely something that you learn from success or fail like which one it's what you learned from it so I've already learned that my top layer of paint where I created my rocks um, maybe I should have just drawn out this lower half and then just left the top half because they're actually they are well I'm trying to think of the word they're hovering above each other. They're not resting on each other as it is now. So that's my first thing I've learnt from this one. Oh, perhaps the second, because the first one should be make sure that your brushes are, are going to stay together. <laughs> They're not going to fall apart. So... There we have it. Lessons learnt. How to grow your creativity. Jump right on in there and start and learn as you go. All right, so we've just about got this background covered. If there's anything else that anyone would like to ask. <laughs> so let's see what I did down here. Yep, okay. I did go in there. So I might have to call this piece my hovering rocks. Funny. I do feel like this one actually does need to come around a little bit more narrower at that end. I don't want to run the brush over it too many times. As it starts to dry, it thickens up. And if you brush over it too many times at that point, you'll pull the paint away and then you'll have to touch it up anyway. So that was just the first coat. Um, and it will require another one. But for the moment, I think we just might try and look at <laughs> my hovering rocks. Wow. All right, 
So we're going to go back to this brush and we're going to look at, hi Anne, how are you going? Better late than never. Look, I appreciate all of it. Thank you so much for being here. Maybe you could paint some wildflowers between the rocks to pull them together. Um, I could, I'm not sure I'm that talented. Um, what would you consider a wildflower? I wonder if you spray a seal on your part first part, if you can then release your second. So if I sprayed it now, Anne, could I start with my second coat or the original pour if I had have sealed that first? I think that's what you mean and if so yes absolutely if I had have sealed this I mean I could probably go and wash most of it off right now um, because this is an old pour that I've done so it's very very cured and so I could probably try and wash some of this black off but it's okay, I, I take a lot of appreciation out of the learning curves that I go through. No, if you had sealed the first coat. Oh, okay. Yep. Maybe just some wispy green plants or moss. Yeah, maybe. You could put something a little in there or maybe I could because I do want to so see how this even though I've just tried to rinse it off but I can still create a bit of there's still paint in there and a bit of moisture from the water so I could come in and do a little bit of shading in here at the bottom just picking up color from this pretty much dried section because the brush has still got that bit of moisture on it so if I tap that it is picking up some color to see how that will go for shading So kind of just thinking about when you do uh, those like raindrop bubbles, water droplets and going with that. So you want to have the shadow on the bottom and then a bit of a highlight with a With a bit of a, a glare spot picking up a little bit more. like 
that one. Alright, so just want to make sure that the complete underside is shadowed, that I don't have these tiny little shiny bits sticking out the bottom. And I've almost got about a third of the brush laying down on the canvas. You could probably see that I'm holding the brush quite a ways back and just letting that movement cover and the angle of the brush pretty low so So just a couple more to go, some small shadows to go. Some in here. And then because this brush is drying out a little bit, so I'll just dip the tip of the brush into the water tap some off onto the side and then come back and soften those last ones. Picked up some extra paint there from getting too close to the edge. There we go. This one. All right. So it's always good to, if you feel like you've been looking at it too closely, to hold it up and look at it from afar, or arm's reach. <laughs> Some of our arms may not be as long as others. Let's hold it up and have a look. You actually like the floating rocks, it's unique. It is. Can you add that light grey blue on the top of each rock to make it floating? Rest on it. You do love the shading. Thank you very much. That is a great idea, Anne. Um, I do think that could be a solution. Let's just have a look. So if that was standing up there, you see the shading on the underside. I 
I kind of love both ideas um, of the some type of flower or weed growing between them also other little rocks that could just be stuck in there um, grabbing similar colors I don't know that I have these paints anymore to actually match it but I am going to do a highlight now so perhaps I can bring it up a little bit more oh okay I just had the realization that each rock that stacks upon it would give shade to this one so perhaps like this one should have some shade over here and over here underneath this rock oh learning 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 which is only going to darken it even more isn't it okay let's go without the upper shading for now because I initially was going to put a highlight there so I'll just stick with that Okay, so for the highlight I have a different brush because I wasn't confident that I would get the black one clean enough to use for the white. Oops, where's my white gone? So this white here is Creative Place, Titanium White, Get that. and we'll throw some highlights in there. I like the floating rocks too, but I kind of think something, and maybe it will turn into a couple of little pebbles and a little weed wildflower may just pop out of there but that's something that I'm going to also have to do at another time because I need to do that very last and this background will need another coat after the video so let's see so we'll put some of this titanium white down here be great to grab a fresh water cup oh dear I've got the hiccups oh no let's see so now we work on the highlights make sure Okay, so just wetting the brush now and picking up some white. And that's not the right angle either. Okay. Sorry, stay. Balance. All right. So. Let's let me think if there's anything else. So if I put the highlight in an area where, like not here, because that is where shade would be from that one. This is where the sun would hit this one on the top would pretty much be most of it but I'm 
Well, let's see how we go. So, highlight in there, over here. But the thing about the rock, because it's like ovalish, whatever shape it may be, there could be a highlight that comes. Approximately here. So let's see about this one. This one may have a bit more of a highlight on this side. Again, trying to hold that brush back. And there wouldn't be, I don't feel like there would be a highlight here. But this one may have one similar-ish area. But it is a different shape, so we'll create it that way. And then just dipped a little of my brush into the water again, picked up some more white paint. This rock will mostly be covered, but we will give it a highlight over here. because this part of the rock rises so we may have some highlight there and not on that side So this one I'm feeling as though it may be back this way again, a little bit there. up some bit of water and some paint again so this larger one here will have some highlight around this side and very minimal over here There we go. All right. 
So we'll soften that section there. And create a highlight. So how are we going out there? Are there any more questions before we finish up with this one? Two. All right. So this top one now we have to come back and give that a highlight and then hold it back again and see if we agree with the highlights or what we think from here. So let's hold it up and have a look now. Okay. Let's swap hands. So can you tell the difference with the shadows, the highlights? No questions, observing, learning, enjoying the company. Oh, thank you. So, you can see the background now. It's pretty much dry, but not quite enough to go over it again right now. So, we'll have to come back and finish this in another video, or I'll do it in a in a video and upload the video not in a live so yeah so I, I do feel like something little pebbles those weeds um, I could try and create in these darker areas I could try and create them a little something to make them look a bit higher and closer together but you know we'll see how we go so there is trying to hold it back far enough there we go Alrighty. My pleasure, Anne. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. And yeah, 
So thanks for joining me to re redo my previous pour. The shading makes the rocks 3D. Awesome! I was so hoping that that was how they were coming across. So, yeah, all right. I will do that. I have decided officially I will do it during a recording and upload the video because I think that will be awesome and I'm really excited now. So, I was excited to try it, but I'm even more excited to finish it. So that is definitely something that really keeps you going. All right. So thank you so, so much, everybody, for being here. I really appreciate it. You love it with the shading. Yeah, it does make such a difference, doesn't it? Thank you, Anne. Um, yeah, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks, Jean. I appreciate you being here and don't forget that there's now a face group, Facebook group to be able to share things with me and it's creating and sharing with Tracy. Tracy has an E. Um, so if you search that, if you're on Facebook and request to join, there's only a few of us in there so far because I only just created it. So, oh yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you thank you and yeah so please give the video a thumbs up I really love that and for those watching the replay please leave me a comment below on what you think of my floating balancing rocks <laughs> and how we're going so far so um, I hope to see your comments on the upload when that happens and yeah thank you so much uh, if you have to go anywhere please take care and be kind be creative and be fabulous <laughs>